It's time to take your business to the next level, the boss level. These are the premier business owner strategies and successes being utilized by the industry's top talent today. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. Now let's welcome your host, Anne Ganguza. Hola, boss bosses. Bienvenidos al podcast con Anne Ganguza y Pilar Uribe. Hey everyone, welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Ian Ganguza, and I am excited to bring back to the show Pilar Uribe, my very, very special guest co host. Pilar, woohoo! How are you? I'm doing great, Anne. How are you? I'm amazing, thank you. Anne. <laughs> what? Anne. What, what? Guess what I'm wearing. Oh. Guess what I'm wearing today. Oh my. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing, Pilar? Are you in the booth right now? I, I am. Ah, I am in the booth. It's something that makes you feel good. It does. It does. Because this morning I went walking. Uh-huh. I did my 10,000 steps like awesome. I do every morning. Awesome. And then I came home, I showered, I changed, and I put on my Voss t-shirt. <gasps> and it's what? really cool. Awesome. I just got it in the mail. And it's so much fun. I am so So excited, guys. Yeah. So bosses out there, in case you didn't know, in honor of the most amazing Pilar Uribe, we have really cool swag in our boss studio store. So you can go to shop boss brand gear. And we have a whole line of really cool swag. We got t-shirts, we got mugs, we got accessories, we've got all sorts of things. And they're really, really awesome. I mean, I love this combination of your logo and some just amazing pieces of swag that you guys can get. I'm really liking that little bag where you can like put your stuff the, in the and accessories carry pouch. it around. I love it. And like, now, yeah, Pilar, you can put anything in there. We have two different sayings, Pilar, and I'm going to have you say them because I cannot do the justice. <laughs> to the sayings that we what? have on what? the shirts. What? The voz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I hear you. It's voz, la voz. Voz, la voz. Voz, la voz. La yeah. voz. And what else? We've got another logo on the mugs, not just la voz. Ah, right. The other one, right. That is, you say, di algo. Di algo. Say something. Di algo. Di algo. Di algo. Did Say I do something. that justice? I don't think I did. You sure did. Yes, absolutely okay. you did. Yes, awesome. completely. I oh, love yeah. that little mug, man. I'm getting myself a little mug. It's like black with this, and it's hot pink. I love the hot pink. I know. I and think, the yeah, shirts, I think it's really cute. Yeah, the shirts we yeah. have in like so many colors. It's amazing. The shirt is really, it's really soft, boss mm-hmm. bosses, because you know how like there's sometimes you get t-shirts and they're just kind of, they're like sandpaper. They're rough. I don't understand yes, why. I do know. Like, like sometimes like conference t-shirts are just like rough and you're like, why are you giving me a rough t-shirt? <laughs> this is not that. This is not that. This is a very soft. This is quality swag. Yes. Quality it, swag. I love quality swag. So. It's so much fun. And there's like a little notebook. I'm kind of eyeing the notebook now. I'm yeah. kind of thinking I might have to get the notebook and the short sleeve because I got the long sleeve, actually. The yeah. long sleeve is just so cozy. I'm loving it's so it. cold out here. I'm LA, loving so. a short sleeve. And I'm a big V-neck girl. So, yeah. I know. I you guys, I know. Yeah. make sure you check out the really cool swag. And in addition to our Pilar-themed line of <laughs> swag, we've also got some really cool working voice. What else? 100% boss. We've got VO bossy. We got some really cool sayings, some really cool logos on some really great merchandise. So make sure you go visit the shop under voboss.com and then shop boss brand gear. So, Ooh, I just saw something really cute. You've got oh. a little boss onesie. I do, Uh-oh. I do, I, I might do. Be, I might be shopping soon. You've got some bossy pants? Oh, <gasps> Get out of bossy town. Pants. Okay, so now oh. that concludes our paid advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of getting into this. Actually, wow. we're just so okay. excited about it. So guys, sorry about that. But Pilar, you said something earlier that yeah. I want to talk to you about. You said, you, you know, you got your 10,000 steps in, you're making sure you're drinking your water mm. and you're doing all these things to contribute to your wellness, which I think is so important for bosses that are working regularly, or even if you're not working regularly, your health, your wellness is so important and contributes so much to your performance and just your growth in your business. So I think we should have an episode talking about what we do for wellness and some tips and tricks and things that might help you guys in the booth. I think it's really important to think about that because even before the pandemic, of course, my life really was about 
being in the booth because that's where I was most of the time when I wasn't at the radio station or out and about. I was in my booth doing audiobooks and and other things. That's and some so long it, hours in the booth. It's like, yes. And so, and usually you're, I mean, I, I have it where I can sit and I can stand. It's not mm-hmm. one or the other. But still, you're seated, and a lot of the times you're not in the booth. You're editing, or you're in the booth, yeah. and you're doing it all at once. If you oh, my goodness, it all. the editing. <laughs> the yeah, editing. The editing, which or is like forever. Or you're you doing know? the accounting or the marketing, and you're sitting. And I will say, <laughs> myself, a woman of a certain age, sitting no longer is... <laughs> Like healthy, not that sitting was ever healthy for me before, but I think my body bounced back if I sat, you know, because I've always worked in technology. But I've also been more mobile when I had to like go into work and yeah. walk around. And even though I sat a lot, I, I was actually a whole lot more active. And the pandemic came and oh my goodness, I was so busy, thankfully, and I'm gratefully so busy. But I have been spending a lot of time sitting and it has not done me any favors, that's for sure. No, and and the thing is, is that becomes cumulative when you stop moving around and working, not necessarily working out, as I say, in a gym, but working your body, working your muscles, moving, stretching. Your body eventually atrophies. So if you're not moving those muscles, you basically just, you kind of constrict. And we are in the business of expanding for as long as we can. So we, you want to stretch, Expanding right? my I mean, body, it, maybe, after well, the but, pandemic. You know, well, right. That, yes, I agree. I've, I have maybe gained 10 pounds. Way. Maybe yeah, not but, in a good way. But yeah, that the pandemic has kind of wreaked havoc with my health a little bit. In a good way because I've been working so much, but in a bad way because, again, I've been working so much. So I need to consciously take time out to make sure that I am taking care of my health. And I will say kudos and congrats to all those people out there, which I know a number of people who actually use the pandemic to get really into shape and take a challenge so that they can be the best that they can be. And I just unfortunately was not one of them. I kind of went the other way, kind of sitting a little too much and working a little too much, but I'm coming full circle because I've made a considerable investment in getting started and more conscious, being more conscious about my health, walking. Of course, the last time I walked, I tore my sciatica muscle. And so Ooh. that was a thing. So now I've I've got a you know an elliptical machine which is helping me to not necessarily destroy that muscle. I have a little less impact, although I'm not walking right. outside as much anymore, which I miss. But that's become right. an important part of me being healthy, not just physically but mentally. Yeah, and I think you really have to factor into your day some kind of movement. Mm -hmm. and some kind of sustained movement, whether it's the elliptical or it's a stationary bike or it's walking or if you're lucky enough to live in warm weather, swimming, like in the summer months. But you have to keep the heart rate up in some way, shape, or form. I do it by now it's still pretty cold out here, but in the summer months I hope to start swimming. And for now what I'm doing is I'm walking and I make sure that I have 10,000 steps that every day I walk my 10,000 steps. Yep. And so on an iPhone, they have, and there are multiple apps. I know on my iPhone, I think by default, it has a whole health thing where it tracks you. And I just bought a new Apple Watch, which is really awesome. So it will track everything that I want and and actually connect up to my smart fitness machine, my elliptical. It will track everything there, how many steps, how many calories I've burned, what my heart rate is, and all of those wonderful health healthy things, which I want to know, or I might look at my watch when I'm having a stressful day and then go, whoa, my heart rate, make sure that it's, that it's good. But also every hour, it has that little hepatic tap that tells me I need to stand up, which is really important for me. And I, like you, I have a standing desk. I'm I'm assuming you have a standing desk because you said you can do both. I have a standing desk, so if I'm not in my booth, I can actually raise it up and stand or I can sit, which has been a great, great help for me. Yeah. Well, I have the old stand and then bring the stool in. Yeah. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. so I'm very lucky a VO person actually fitted in for me in my booth. It's a movable arm. And it's really cool because you can adjust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can adjust the the mic going up and down. Mm -hmm. So when I want to sit, I adjust the mic. Yep. Yeah, it's a boom arm. And I mean, I definitely one day, because they're, they're kind of expensive, but the desks are really helpful for outside when I'm editing, mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. then I don't have to be standing and sitting. 
But whatever it is that you do, whatever it is that you decide to do, make sure that you do it for at least 20, 30 minutes a day. Get out and about. Move around, if you can, every hour, because you really don't want to be sitting in one place. It's just not good for the body. I mean, on all levels. And stretching really, really helps. I mean, that's one thing, because I, I used to suffer from sciatica as well, so I understand the pain and the discomfort. And Sciatica I'm comes very... out of nowhere some days. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. It's awful. <laughs> it's like women of a certain age, not just women, but I'm just saying, <laughs> I never yeah. experienced sciatica. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, it came on, and then it seemed to never go away. And then it went away, but then it came back. And so that is something that I struggle with. And it's very, very tough to stretch that. But it is important yes. that I stretch every stretch. day to help yes. that. Because, you know, I don't want to be uncomfortable. First of all, I don't want to render myself, you know, <laughs> unable to feel comfortable and then try to go into my booth and perform. I mean, that is just something right. that is not a good thing. So having those conscious things that you're doing to maintain wellness, not just, and we had spoken about vocal wellness in a previous episode, and now Mm -hmm. we're extending it to physical wellness. And a mental wellness is is also something that I think is super important for us. And something that I've mentioned multiple times on the podcast, your mental health is so important so that you're in your best performance mode. There's so many things that you can do to help yourself because a lot of times people say, oh, I I don't know what to do. It can be something as simple as closing your eyes for a minute and just breathing in. you just like breathing in one, breathing in, breathing out two, breathing in three, breathing out four. And you go all the way up to 10 and then you can come back down. And let's say you're stressed and you're trying to get a voice or a a, a feeling, you're trying to finish a sentence or you're stuttering, which sometimes it's like, I will just so trip over myself. And I literally just take a step back. I take off my headphones and I sit on the floor and I just breathe. And then all of a sudden, it's like, I don't know where I was, but I disconnected from that stressful moment. And then I can just come back to the work. That helps me so much. I kind of envision it like, and I may have mentioned this before, like when a dog turns around three times. If you turn around three times, let's say you're really, really stressed or you're, you're in a bad mood or whatever. You turn around three times and you can't really remember what it was, that feeling, because it's like you just kind of just, just shook it out of yourself. So it's like shaking that off. That helps me a lot. Uh, something that helps me as well, let's say when I want to just, Stress relievers, because the other thing that we don't realize is that when we're sitting at a desk, we're not always standing with our back straight. We might be hunched over. We might be, our spine is in a C. We've got our hands in a certain way, and then you wonder why your hand hurts, because you've just been, like, gripping the mouse, like, there's no tomorrow. So there's so many things that we don't even realize as the day goes by. So to get up every hour to breathe, to turn around, to do a little bit of what I described was just a little teensy-weensy part of meditation, or just to close your eyes for a minute, will help get you through the day without as much stress. And what they've discovered in studies is that meditation, and meditation can be as simple as what we just did, and it can be just something to close, just closing your eyes and sitting, or it can be lying down, is a natural reliever for cortisol. Cortisol just makes you that much more stress. When you have cortisol in your system, it's like you're on fire and you're, all your muscles are just clenching. And so meditation is actually a natural reliever of that. So it could be something as simple as just reading in a book, reading aloud, reading a poem, just breathing in and out. All those little teensy tips and tricks throughout the day can help you And that's important because we do spend a lot of time in our booths, in our rooms. It can be a really tight space. It can be a big space and in one position. And you want to try to relieve that. Yep. So, Anne, tell me what you do to relieve your stress on any given day. 
Do you jump out of bed? Do you wake up? Do you read a little bit? What do you do? So for me, I I actually will, I don't jump out of bed. <laughs> I have a compression <laughs> machine. A compression machine which actually moves fluid in my body to where it's supposed to go because I've had some, just some lingering issues from back in the day when I was taking some medication. And so I have to get rid of excess fluid in my body through my lymph nodes. So, and what's really cool is it's actually kind of kind of healthy anyways if I didn't need to move that fluid. It just it basically moves everything where it needs to be. That's the first thing I'll do in the morning for about 20 minutes. And that really makes me feel a whole lot better when I get up out of bed that now I've had all of the necessary fluids moved to my lymph nodes that need to be so that my body can take care of what it needs to take care of for the day. While I'm doing that, it's a really good time to just kind of meditate and really think back on what, well, I like to have time to think about what I'm grateful for. And I always want to make sure I do that. You know, not to get too much of that, but I always have to say what I'm grateful for every day because I just feel like that reaffirms how lucky I am. And it starts my day on a positive note. So it's kind of like meditation and then, but not necessarily thinking about nothing. I'm actually thinking about what I'm grateful for, which really puts me in a positive note for the day to get going. And then I will, I am guilty of liking coffee. (laughs) So I will have a cup of coffee. However, I have no problem drinking as much water. As a matter of fact, I might drink more water than is necessary, but at least I start off with my 33-ounce alkaline water from Kirkland. And so I will chase my coffee, or within sips of coffee, I will take sips of water as well, especially if I have voiceover to work to do. I probably won't drink coffee. If I have voiceover work to do... (laughs) I will most definitely hydrate in the booth. And I also wear my watch so that it reminds me to stand up every hour. And out in the garage, I have an elliptical and a Peloton. And my husband, believe it or not, who used to teach back in the day, back in the 80s, he used to teach step. He just got Uh a step. So interesting, he's going to be stepping (laughs) beside me now while I'm doing my elliptical. (laughs) So that'll be fun in our garage. And I'm so happy that we set that up in the garage. And we did that during the pandemic because we weren't able to go to a gym at the time. And the two of us were working like crazy people and sitting a lot and it did not do us any favors. And my husband, for all the all the people that know my husband, he's a really good cook. So the mm. cook combination with the sitting a lot, I gained my pandemic weight for sure. But we're getting ourselves back on track. So I'm happy about that. Well, you just mentioned something that I think is really important is the gratitude. I do the Mm -hmm. gratitude list at night mentally. Some people write it out. And I think it's really important because we take a lot sometimes, at least I do. I can't speak for everyone, but sometimes I take things for granted. So I have to remember and be grateful that I have a roof over my head. I have food in my refrigerator. I have a car that I can drive to go to my sessions that I have money to pay for my food, that I have a cat who loves me. Well, that's questionable, but um, he does. <laughs> so it's, it's on his terms. And I think it's really important because when you're in gratitude, you're less likely to be in resentment over, oh, yeah, I didn't get this job, or mm-hmm. why didn't mm-hmm. they call me, or I'm not as far as I should be. All thoughts that every single person on the planet, if you're a working voice actor, has had. Whether we want to admit it or not, we do because we're human. And so having gratitude, I just think, is so important. Even if it's the little things, it's like, oh, I got a call back. Yeah, I didn't get the job, but guess what? They heard me and they wanted to hear me again. Mm -hmm. How awesome is that? So it's like being grateful for everything, whether the outcomes are the way you wanted them or not what you were expecting. I think that that's really important. I was going to say mental health, right? As we're being grateful, I think that throughout the day, we have to also try to revisit at some point if we need to, because during the day, the online social media events of the day can start to stress you out. And I think you Mm. need to take those breaks and maybe think again about being grateful or why you're grateful. I know there are times I'll read something in social media and it will just fire me up. I can't imagine, like if I were to look at my watch 
and see my heart rate. Sometimes my heart rate has gone up from mm. some of the posts that I see yep. online. I've tried really hard to back away a little bit from that because I know that's not necessarily productive for me because I don't want to spend my day in that state where I have an elevated heart rate because I'm frustrated or I saw something that somebody posted that I I just am like, I can't believe I just saw that. And so I think that the mental health and the stress of the day, we need to get up and shake it out. And I wanted to say for sure, our fur babies, <laughs> my cats, are a huge part of my mental well-being. A lot of times I'll just go and play with them. That is like, oh, I need a kitty break. <laughs> so for me, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I need a kitty break. Where's my kitty? And I'll just go and hug them. And you know what's so interesting, Pilar? Our cats are so, so happy. For the past two and a half years since we've had Mm. to be home, I cannot tell you how happy the studio (laughs) cats are. I mean, as a matter of fact, we brought them to the vet and each one of them, the vet is like, their blood work is immaculate. Like, they are some of the healthiest cats I have seen. And of course, you know, I'm all proud. I'm like, well, you know. It's because we take really good care of them and and we play with them. And the funny thing is, is I think that's a part of their health too and our health. So we can not only help our health, but our our animals' health too. Take a walk, play with the animals. And that's been a big difference from me. Even when growing up, I've always had cats, but I've really like excelled at playing with my cats because (laughs) it's good for them and it's good for me. You know, it keeps them in shape. It keeps their mental, they're hunters, right? So we have to play with them and have them hunt things. And so I've, I've actually understood my animals a whole lot more since this pandemic because I've really taken the time to use them for good mental health for me and a good studio cat hug. There's nothing better. Oh, outside oh. of my Jerry, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I concur is all I can say because mm-hmm. mine, my cat really has so many duties Besides which I'm on hand and foot, catering to him, <laughs> yep. you know, because it's always, it's always about him. It's not about me. It's I just, you know, of course, as I've said We're before. We're just here I to just, serve I, them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just, I just pay the rent for him. Yep. You know, he sits there and he looks at me. And so I, when I have stuff that I have to work on, voice acting, I will do my, my characters. I will try them on him. And he'll look at me. And it's perfect. <laughs> Yeah, I have a great time doing it. Yes, they're the best audience for characters. And it's funny because people who aren't even voice actors, right? When we speak in our in our pet voice, <laughs> don't we always go up into this elevated character voice? Oh my, who's a good kitty? <laughs> we always go into these different character voices talking to the cats, always. It's the funniest thing. I have gotten more work when I go into my speaking to Paco voice on an audition. <laughs> it is, I, I, it oh astounds gosh. me. Because I sit there and go, it's a pusito chiquito, little mamboso, cosito bonito. You know, it's like, I don't know what the hell that is, but Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it. And yeah, that gets me work. So I'm like, yeah, I just. There you go. He even gets you work. Paco even gets you work. I love it. Yeah, he even gets me work. So he's, he's earning his supper. And you know what's so cool? <laughs> Not even are they just great sounding boards for for your characters. My cats, they have their own Facebook page. They have their own Instagram page. So I connect with people through my cats. So my cats are so darn cute, right? <laughs> Everybody's cats are so cute. It's kind of a a talking point. Who doesn't love to see pictures of fur babies on the internet? I mean, it's the one thing that's not political. It's not, right? It's not going to make anybody angry unless you're looking at things that, you know, we don't want to see happen to animals like abuse. But anybody I know can't resist a kitten photo or a puppy photo or any kind of animal, really. I think that that's, that contributes to the mental health and wellness of, of everybody, even on the internet. You know, I've resisted having Paco as his separate page. I'm getting a little envious of people who have a separate page (laughs) for their animals. And I'm thinking I might have to do that because that's the other thing. I take pictures of him all day long. Well, I just I just put a picture on my Instagram page (laughs) because I just I couldn't stand it. And I just I get I like I want everyone to see what he's doing. Oh, I know. Cuteness. And I probably have. I mean, honestly, all right, I'm going to here. I'm just going to tell you, Pilar, between you and I. Yeah, I probably have. 
and the rest of the world listening, <laughs> I probably have 50,000 pictures of my cats because oh. I, I've taken pictures of them when they were little. We got them as kittens. And that's right. like, oh my gosh, I, they're so darn cute. And there's three of them. So, you know what I mean? Like, so it's triple. It's one times three. Right, exactly. Because you have to take pictures of all of them. So, yeah, I totally get it. I'm not ashamed, it. but I, I will admit that I probably do have about 50,000. Now, granted right now, I don't have any children. So they they kind of like, they're my children, my fur babies. iCloud storage and, must love Love you. Cool. I <laughs> well, I, I pay for extra, of course. Of course but they're you do. so darn cute. Don't we they all? just make me happy. And and I think that anyone that's looking for <laughs> wellness, if they can and they're animal lovers, I think that is such a huge contributor to the biggest stress reliever, the biggest unconditional love, happy thing that you can do for yourself and your business. I'm just saying. Get yes. A, get a kitty. Yeah. Get a little kitten. <laughs> yes. Or, yes. And I don't want to say don't, you know, I'm not, I'm also, I love or dogs Or a dog. Too. Or a yes, dog. Yes, exactly. I used to have a dog and a cat. Or a goat. Or a or goat. A and or a, a goat. Horse. How about a horse? <laughs> oh my God. It's hard to sleep with a horse in your bed, so that would be a, <laughs> or, be a little difficult. Or a teacup pig. I mean, I've always wanted one of those. <laughs> like, like honestly wow pigs are cute okay they're adorable yeah they're cute so yeah anyways yeah, yeah fur babies <laughs> fur babies are good so I yeah. think that yes it's so so important that we consider our, our wellness and I think sometimes though it takes being because we're so invested this is me to a T right I get so focused I get so involved in my work and yes I have admitted I'm probably a, I work more than I should and with that it's more important than ever right that I take time out to take care of myself and you don't want to have something crazy happen to you before you stop and, and think about your health. You know, you don't yeah. want to have a, a health event happen. And I've yeah. had a health event happen and I should know. I feel like I should know more than any other time in my life. I should be so aware of my health. But sometimes I just get carried away and get so involved and the stress starts getting to me. And, you know, it's time to stop and shake it out pet your cat, have a little gratitude, go for a walk, get that exercise in there, and yeah, have a balanced, have a balanced career. Yeah. I think yeah. it, that that is all so important because what you're doing, even while you're working, and even if you're- Even if you love what you do, right? Even if you love what you do, even mm -hmm. if you're really busy, you want to have habits that are going to be healthy habits that are preventative. Yeah. So you Agreed. don't have to sit there and be like, I I was at a studio the other day and the voiceover actor came out and he'd been drinking Diet Coke in the studio. And then he said, oh, I'm going to just take a couple of extra Diet Cokes. This was a very, very tall, very large man. And I thought he drank at least three in the studio and he's going to drink three more Diet Cokes. And I was like, Wow. If you do that year after year after year, what's that going to do to your body as, as a cumulative effect? Whereas drinking tons of water, let's say, instead of that, and, and meditating and walking and having these healthy habits is insurance towards the future. So you mm -hmm. want to be healthy for as long as you possibly can and have a healthy voice. And so you want, you want to think about what you're putting into your body and, what, and the thoughts that you're thinking and how you're waking up in the morning. So I think everything that we've talked about today is, just, is super important as moving forward yes. into living a healthy life in voiceover. And you know what else? I think this has been a great discussion. You know what else can help is by helping others, giving back. Oh, yes. And and I really, I'm a big believer in that. You know, I've always, always tried to, when I can, give back, give back to my community, give back to people in need. So, and I really believe that giving back is such an important part. And one of our newest sponsors has given us a opportunity, an opportunity to contribute to make a difference and to give back to the communities that give to us. And that organization is 100voiceswhocare.org. And you can actually contribute and make a big difference. Because I know sometimes it's like, I feel like I don't have a lot to contribute. And how can I really make a difference? Well, the really cool thing about this organization is we get a minimum of 100 people together, all donating literally just $100 a quarter. So that's like $33.33 .33 a month. And if you combine that together, 
for a quarter with 100 voices, that's $10,000 that can be given to a community or an organization in need. And that is a wonderful, wonderful feeling. So you guys can find out more by visiting 100voiceswhocare.org and you can make a difference for sure. I'd also like to give a great big shout out to our sponsor, IPDTL, that allows Pilar and I to have these wonderful conversations every week. You guys can be bosses. Find out more at IPDTL.com. Thanks so much, guys. You guys have an amazing week and we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your host, Ann Ganguza. And take your business to the next level. Sign up for our mailing list at voboss.com and receive exclusive content, industry revolutionizing tips and strategies, and new ways to rock your business like a boss. Redistribution with permission, coast-to-coast connectivity via IPDTL.